Ooh, good morning. What's up, everybody? My name is Josh Wojnarowski, and I'm a photographer, filmmaker, vlog, and you know what, forget it. And today, we're gonna be learning how to take photos of ourselves. Yo, welcome back. So we're out here at Discovery Park, and today we're gonna be making the ultimate self-portrait tutorial. And how do I know it's gonna be good? Well, because I just completely blew it off to get the best self-portrait I've ever taken. All right, so today we're gonna be talking about three different ways to take self-portraits. Depending on the gear you have, as well as the camera you have, these techniques can vary, but hopefully you should be able to implement at least one of them. All right, so first let's talk about why you'd wanna do this. So why would you wanna take a portrait of yourself? Can't you get someone else to do that? Well, if you're anything like me, you photograph pretty much every trip you go on. If you go on a hike, if you go on vacation, you're photographing it. What that also means is you're the guy with the camera, meaning I get tons of pictures of all my friends, my family, incredible landscapes, little detail shots, and I get almost zero pictures of myself. Now, it's not the end of the world, but you know, who doesn't want pictures of themselves? Quality, high quality pictures to post on the Instagram, the Facebook, or to just keep around as memories. Now, the obvious solution is, hey, why don't you ask your friends to photograph you? But it, okay, no offense to any of my friends if you're watching this, but you guys aren't photographers, at least not all of you. So when I say something like, all right, can you put the 50 mil on, change the aperture 1.8, set the shutter speed, make sure I'm exposed properly, not the background, all of a sudden it's like I'm talking rocket science to them. Now you still might be thinking, well, just set it up for them and have them point and shoot and tell them exactly what you want. But you'd just be surprised how many little things that people who aren't photographers don't know about. Sometimes you just wanna take the picture yourself. Or you know, maybe you're not with friends, or maybe you don't have any really close friends, or maybe you're the type of guy who gets up at 5.30 a.m., walks to the light rail, takes the light rail downtown, hops on a bus, arrives at a place, and then hikes another two miles to get to a spot just to take one photo in the morning. That photo might even be just for a thumbnail for a six, seven, eight minute YouTube video. Whatever your reason, today we're gonna to be talking about how to get the best self-portraits of yourself. There's three ways we're gonna talk about how to do it. So depending on your camera or depending on your situation, one might work better than the other, but at least one of them should help you get banger portraits. So let's get into it. <laughs> it's literally freezing out here. All right, so let's start off with method one. This is the most simple way to take a portrait of yourself. So all you're really gonna need is your camera and something to hold it up. It doesn't have to be a tripod, like you could just set your camera down, but a tripod is ideal. So we're gonna say a camera and a tripod. I'm also making the assumption your camera has some sort of timer feature. If it doesn't, you'll need an intravolometer. Now, this method is pretty straightforward. All you're gonna do is set up your camera in the frame you want, and you need to pull focus before you get in the frame. Now, the best way to do this is to either place an object exactly where you're gonna be standing, or focus on something close enough so you'll still be in focus when you press the shutter and run in front of the camera. Morning. So like, I'm here at the beach right now. I could grab a log, I could grab a stick, I could use my backpack. And what I'd wanna do is I'd wanna place it out where I wanna stand, and then I'd move there after pulling focus, and then set a timer on my camera, run, move the object, and get the picture. Now, the pros to this method, it's super easy to do, super easy to set up, if you just need a quick shot of you standing somewhere, it gets the job done. But there are some cons. So first of all, it's really tough to get a shallow depth of field. If you wanna shoot at something like 1.8, 2.8, it's highly unlikely your face, and more particularly your eyes, are gonna line up exactly where you place that object. It's just really difficult to do. On top of that, it takes a while. If you're anything like me, you're not very good at like, posing, making the right facial expression. I'm not a model, I'm not good at that. So if you're like me, you wanna take a lot of pictures, sometimes like 50 just to get one where your smile is correct. And that would take forever setting a 10 second timer, running into a spot, taking the picture, running back, checking it. It's just not very efficient. 
Next, let's talk method two, which is using an intervalometer in combination with face tracking. It's 2019, no, it's 2020. It's 2020, technology is incredible nowadays, and there's some awesome technology packed into new cameras. Even this camera, which I think came out in 2016, can do it. So let's take advantage of it. Jeez, that sun is bright. So I can't guarantee this is gonna work on your particular camera, but I have a Canon 80D with me today, and it works on this. I think most Canon cameras made, you know, at least 2016 and later should be able to do it. Maybe Sony's can, maybe Panasonic's can, maybe, you know, Fuji, whatever can. I don't know, my Canon can. If not, you can just skip to the next one. For this method, again, you're gonna need a camera, hopefully something with face tracking or eye tracking, I forgot that's a thing, along with a tripod, or again, you could set your camera somewhere, but a tripod's ideal. And you're gonna need an intervalometer if your camera doesn't have a built-in feature, although for all I know, some cameras do by now. So once again, what you're gonna do, you're gonna set up the frame you want, plug in your intervalometer, and what you wanna do is set it to interval mode. Depending on what you're doing, you might only need 10 shots. If you're trying to do a handstand like I was this morning, and you're not good at handstands like I'm not, you might set it up for like 80 shots. But depending on what you're doing, set the amount of shots to whatever's appropriate for what you're doing, or you could just set it at like 100 and just, you know, come back and turn it off when you're done. But you're gonna set up an interval and you can have the distance between each shot as far apart as you want. Normally three seconds is pretty good. Again, if you're doing something that needs a lot of precision, you can knock it down to one second. That's what I ended up doing this morning. And once you've got it all set up correctly, you should just be able to walk in a frame and between each shot, your camera's gonna pull focus to your face and take the image. The reason you can't do this when you set a timer is it pulls focus when you set that timer for the first time. You're not in the frame when you set the focus for the first time. Chances are you're not where you wanna be unless you're just taking a selfie or something. But when you set up multiple shots going one after another on those intervals, every time you move, you can try out poses. It'll track your face before each and every shot, which is super handy. Now the cons to this, it takes a little more gear, it takes a little bit newer gear, and I guess it takes a little bit longer to set up. But this is my favorite method to get self-portraits, because you can even get a pretty shallow depth of field. I've gone down to 1.8 on my 50 millimeter and still got it to lock focus. It looks like a professional photo. Little did they know, I took it myself. So if you've got a newer camera and you've got the gear to do this, this is the best way to take self-portraits. Again, I don't know if Sony's can do it. I don't know if Nikon's, Fuji's, Panasonic's. I can't guarantee this will work for you. But on most newer Canon cameras, except for maybe the very entry-level ones, you should be able to do this super, super handy. You can get six shots, post them on Instagram, Facebook, for the scrapbook for the memories. You can take a ton super quickly. This is my favorite method for self-portraits. And the last method is gonna be using your phone. Again, it's 2020. Technology is incredible. Chances are if you're rocking a newer camera, it has Wi-Fi and you can use your phone. For Canon, there's a Canon Connect app to take pictures remotely. Now, unfortunately, I'm not gonna go over how to set it up in this video, because depending on your camera, it's gonna be different. For Canon, there's a Canon Connect app. It's kind of straightforward, kind of a janky app, but it gets the job done. But what you need to do is turn your camera's Wi-Fi on in the settings, then open up your Canon Connect app, connect to the camera, or you know, whatever app you use, connect to the camera, and you're off to the races. Similar to using an intervalometer, you're gonna be able to take a lot of shots pretty quickly. Every time you take a shot, it's gonna pull focus again, so you can get a shallow depth of field. You can take a lot of shots fairly quickly, but there are some drawbacks. So aside from having to have a tripod, a camera with Wi-Fi, and a smartphone, Every time you take a picture, you're gonna have to find a place to put your smartphone. So while yes, you can trigger your photos remotely, you have to do it while holding your phone. So if you're just doing headshots or something from the waist up, not too much of a problem. But if you're trying to do full body shots, you're gonna have to get creative and keep one of your hands out of sight. 
Like right now I'd probably stuff it in my pockets because it's freezing cold. Or you can turn to the side a little bit and just have it hanging behind something. There's a lot of ways to do this, but that's just one con on top of having to have all this gear with a decent amount of setup time. Now, if you're curious on how I got the thumbnail for this video, I did a combination of a couple of these methods. Because I personally didn't need a super shallow field for this, I just pulled focus to the log I was doing a handstand on, switched my camera over to manual focus so it wouldn't try to track my face or move around or anything like that. Then I plugged in an intervalometer, set like a limit of 80 or something photos for every three seconds. Eventually I went down to one second because I missed a lot of my best handstands. And then it was a lot of trial and error, just running back and forth, trying to get the perfect shot. The sun was rising, so exposure was changing. But in the end, I'm so stoked on how that photo came out. Anyways, that's it from me. Hopefully you liked this video. Hopefully it helped you out. Hopefully you can get some banger portraits after it. And as always, if you liked the video, be sure to like it. If you have any questions, have any comments, hit up that comment section down below. And if you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks again for watching. My name is Josh Woniarski. Check me out on Instagram. And I'll see you all in the next one. Morning. Hello.